Okay, so we, we're gonna talk about data visualization, and I thought just to kick it started, I would, because I had to, uh, I would bring back to your attention the principles of data visualization by Tati. I know we all know them, but looking at the entries that we received, I think in the digital age, they're more relevant than, than ever. So principles of, uh, of visualization by Tati, uh, he talks about five key points. The first one being focus on the, on the content, right? So focus on the data, not the, the device that you use as illustration. The, we received some great entries and some that were not that good. Uh, I think it's a good idea to re remind ourselves to focus on the data, not what we are doing to make it pretty. Uh, second point is uh, focus on comparison rather than a mere description. Of, of what you're doing. The benchmarks are, are quite important for visualization. Third point, uh, data integrity. So try to reduce the clutter, uh, use labels to explain what you're saying. Don't let the user assume too much because if you let, if you let the, the user assume too much, they're probably not gonna get it. Um, high resolution is, is quite important. In, in this day and age, use as high a resolution as you can because the, the mind, the, the brain, can, uh, can process a lot more than the typical things that we put in front of people. And last is uh, try to use things that, uh, that you know work if, uh, and, and this is quite a controversial one, and I'm gonna start the, the round uh, asking what you think about this last principle. He, uh, Tafti talks about the proven ways of visualizing are better than something that when you put it in front of people, they wouldn't know what that is. So anyone that wants to have a go at uh, challenging Tafti on this, or, or do you agree? Anyone? I felt a little bit like Boyzone up here, but um, um, from, I think you've, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, from my perspective, I think a data visualization starts with, with me, uh, if, if you like, because you have to be really clear about what it is that you want to say. Um, and then once you've made that decision, the data visualization moves to about you, which is the user. So how do I make sure it's laid out properly? How do I make sure it's self-defining? How do I make sure it's clean and thorough? Um, and the user can take away from it uh, what, they, what I want to say without me having to be there. For me, that's a clear. Um almost hidden agenda for data visualization. If I ask my teams to dive a little bit deeper in the data to really figure out what's the insights, that, that's not an easy process. If I ask them, can you make a picture out of it? Everyone is, is happy and energized and beautiful things are happening. So I really see it also as uh, internally to raise almost uh, the brain power um, in a fun and engaging way. Good, I, I have a different question. Is, um, and, and we've debated this with the judges. Uh, we talk about data visualization and there's a lot of talk about infographics and sometimes these two words are used as a synonym. But I, I don't personally believe they are. So what are, what are your thoughts on this? Is, is infographic the same as data visualization and if not, what's the difference? Thought on that. Okay. Um, for me, um, data visualization typically is a visual story of um, quantitative data. Uh, that's how normally it's interpreted. Uh, infographics could vary from uh, abstract illustrations all the way to um, maybe even code generated, as in procedurally generated. Uh, visual stories which may or may not rely on absolute data terms. So I think the important element here is the human element as in, in infographics, a person makes uh, or a team makes a judgment on the kind of story that they're trying to tell and leaves uh, the storytelling uh, as a dialogue process. In a, in, a in, in a data visualization, typically it's a true representation. That's what mostly people are going after. I've got broader thoughts on, um, on the question as well. I, I think from an agency point of view, our job is to do two things, I think, when we're, when we're uh, communicating our um, advice and recommendations back to our clients. One is to um, make them 
uh, travel within the organization so that they don't stop uh, at our client's door so that they can, they can, um, they can take on a life of their own. They become viral within businesses. And that's, and that's about making something beautiful and exciting and engaging, whether it's data or whether it's qual or whether it's a piece of advice or recommendation um, that you've, just, you've generated as a consultancy. Um, and the other important thing for me um, in this is that there has to be a, a sort of now what, a call to action. So it's not just a static thing that it is, is beautiful or is interesting. Mm -hmm. There has to be something in there that has, a, a, you know, that has a, a, a higher purpose for the, for the business uh, as well as being something that is nice to look at. I think that they, they play two completely different um, roles within the, the, the work of a research team. The, the infographic is more something that is a communication device. It's telling a story about the data and fixing that story with graphic design and with additional information that you are applying to the data visualization. While the data visualization in itself as a raw element is more of a, an exploration device and it's something that you use to find out what the story is. Sometimes you might want to deliver the data visualization as well as an output, but you always need to add elements that make it more like an infographic because you cannot lock in the story rather than leaving it open. And then most of the times data visualization tends to be <coughs> algorithmic. So it's something that is uh, kind of like uh, generated by an algorithm that maps the data onto some graphic shapes while the infographics tend to be something that is more gra graphically designed by hand. Right, so you're saying, and I, I quite like this point, an infographic is the information already processed and thought in the form of a story. So it's, you already know the insight that you want to communicate and you come up with the best device to do it. Whereas if you're thinking of a data visualization tool, you're, you're trying to make the best out of the data to shape it up in a nice way to make it easy for the user to come up with the story, but you're not, you're not closing that, that gap. You're leaving it to them to make the conclusion. So they are quite, uh, quite different things. Right, thank you guys. The um, ne next talking point to, we've, we've got two clients in the, in the panel, and I'm interested in your views about this. What do you think constitutes a good data visualization device? Do you use them? When do you use them? Uh, is this what you use to present research results in your organization? Would you like to do it more? Tell us a little bit about that. I think we, we, we um, spoke a lot about um, uh, data, visualizing data, but we use it much more about visualizing completely different things. A product technology, moisturizing skin cream, uh, softening fabric conditioner, uh, to visualize how that is working. If we make a claim on a product, we want to make clear to a consumer that this actual working. Uh, so that is an area where we use visualization techniques a lot in, in demos or, or, mm. or um, very easy steps. And that is a, a, a very important aspect. And not, not only there, but also in trainings that we are giving. Um, um, we push, if we make a training or we get a training from outside into Unilever, we really push on, well, make it a bit more, um, uh, focus a bit more on visualization. Um, so we, we think a lot outside the, the traditional data um, area. And, and do you think this has increased over time? Is going to increase even more? Or if you do a, a, a trend chart of the use of these in your organization? It, it, it uh, definitely increased over the last uh, year, I think. It's, it's, but, um, uh, and it will, my guess, it will increase more, even uh, so much that I think we should really think about the skill sets that we are getting into the organization, uh, into the, the market research teams. So do we need to have an artist in there, or a designer, or... Um, uh, which is um, yeah, kind, kind of uh, uh, something we need to think about quite carefully because it's big changes, yeah. Absolutely, and I, I'm, I'm gonna come back to, to that point uh, in, in, uh, in a second. Give, okay, yeah, yeah, no, you go, you go. I'm gonna come back, I think. All right, Russ. Well, I think, so from an orange perspective, we have been trying to make our, I guess, our data more visual um, for a number of years on the basis of, you know, 
we don't deal with any market that has English as its first language. And so on that basis, uh, because of the whole everything everywhere, EE combination, we don't work with the UK anymore, just to, just to explain. So every market that we deal with doesn't have English as its first language, and therefore the visualization of that data is incredibly important. And to pick up Stan's point at, uh, about skill sets, again, it's something that, that we, are, we are looking at um, in as much as, you know, if, if we are, if our job is to tell stories um, that, you know, get passed from person to person, um, if you like, then, you know, do we not only need design skills or, or artistic skills, but do we need journalists in the team? You know, do we need people to help us be able to write the tabloid headline? Um, do we need people to be able to have the eye-catching um, information? And I think from a visualization perspective, we are, we are, uh, this is where I kind of have a distinction. I think data visualization is we, we work closely with our agencies in order to kind of, when you present that data or push that data out into the business, it is done at that time. And I think an infographic is almost, once I have the data, I then sit and I consider that information. And then I can design something that goes out later, later on in the process. So in terms of, you know, uh, some of the, kind of the wonderful imagery that we've got behind us here. You know, would we be able to produce that in time for our presentations and the hands out? Probably not, because you need to be able to take time and consider it. Um, so follow-up workshops or something is when we start to work with maybe more of an infographic perspective. But we're very much on the infancy in, in kind of in that path. But, you know, from a mindset, absolutely. You know, we, we, we changed the way we think. Now we've just got to kind of exhibit that in our behavior. So, uh, to you guys, what, um, who, who does it? Who, who does these uh, things in the organization? Do you have a specialist team? They talked about uh, journalists and, and creative people and writers, uh, or is it just the client service team? Well, I, I was going to pick up on the point that both Stan and Russell made. To reflect that need, we've created a division within our business that's a storytelling division with uh, graphic designers, copywriters, consultants, videographers, who are able to answer the needs of, you know, the complex needs of our clients' businesses and come up with the, the best possible visual solution to communicate our ideas and our recommendations back into our clients' businesses. And as I said before, to have them travel. Um, uh, we, we, we also have a, a studio team um, to, to help visualize both data, but also concepts, ideas, prototypes, that kind of thing. But the storytelling division, that sort of multifaceted um, division is something that's quite, quite new to our business. Yeah, we do, um, we do have specific skills in house to do that, but so something that is like strange but I haven't um, heard being mentioned is the paramount role of developers, engineers, and data scientists in designing data visualizations, because uh, most of the examples that we can see at the back are uh, uh, infographics, which is something that, given a specific um, concept that a designer can, can implement, but for a lot of data visualization, you need to have someone that can code in Python, that can code in... Um, I don't know, Ruby and extract the data, manipulate the data and visualize it into software that require them to have a, a kind of like coding skill. For example, D3 that uses that is a basically a JavaScript library. So you need to have those um, skill sets in the company and that's why uh, a lot of research companies are not doing this yet because the mixing the kind of like more humanist side of um, skills like um, um, social sciences or like insights. Um, it's, it's, very dif it's very difficult when it comes to merging with people that have got an engineering background. And, uh, and I think we need to start to introduce those kind of skills into companies that produce uh, software in inverted commas knowledge. Um, in my team, we have uh, what we call typically as a computational designer, people who have sort of design experience, uh, especially visual design experience, as well as uh, hard skills in coding and software integration and data analysis. It's a very hard skill to come by. I try to recruit them on a regular basis, and it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, I must admit, at least in, in Denmark, it's not easy. Um, so we actually have set up something called as the Data Visualization Academy uh, in collaboration with the Danish Design Center, which is like a governmental ethics body for the design industry in Denmark. And we're trying to not just evangelize with the industry about adoption of these kinds of skills, or create markets for these, but at the same time, sort of professionally train people to sort of fill the gaps that's right now missing in that system. So it's kind of a um, yeah, dual approach of sorts. Um, I was thinking as uh, Francesco was talking about the complexity of programming these uh, 
data visualization. Uh, and I'm going to ask what I think is going to be a, a sticky question. And I'm going to invite anyone, if you have any clients in the, in the room that want to also have a go at answering, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, are we, we are not a client, but are, are clients prepared to walk the talk when, uh, when we're talking about doing this seriously? Because as agencies, we have to skill up and the solutions that to, to put something together like that costs more money than to put together a PowerPoint deck. So uh, do, do we recognize the value of doing it? And if we do, are we prepared to back it up financially? And how much? So what, what's the, that, that tension? How are we going to negotiate it? Uh, if you have any thoughts or anyone that wants to have a go. I, I think absolutely the desire is there. Um, but I think it's not a regular occurrence. You know, um, there are, there will be times and places within our organization where data visualization or an infographic will be fundamentally key to the message we need to give. Um, and at that point, absolutely, we will invest um, in order to make that happen. What we generally see is that we invest the money in a much more public way for an infographic. So, you know, if we were presenting at a session like today, we would have invested the money to make sure that the data that we have is represented in the best possible way publicly. You know, internally, uh, you don't, there's no need for it at every, at every turn. So, you know, we will sit and discuss it off PowerPoint 95 times out of 100, and then the other five times we will make the decision that we need to invest more money uh, and create a better sense of the data that we work with. I have a small uh, observation, uh, purely from talking to companies about this, um, and from my own experiences, I've realized, at least from my case, that there is actually a better acceptance or better uptake for these kinds of things in the so-called business intelligence community, or the people who uh, have to make very hard business decisions and who take a responsibility for a huge financial sort of shift in the company uh, compared to market research or uh, consumer insight or those kinds of uh, sections of the companies. And it's just maybe just coincidence, but I just feel like in the market research community somehow uh, the need for fine grain granular data as well as qualitative understanding of the data uh, the interplay is pretty important, which these kinds of tools are not always able to provide. While in a business intelligence context, it's usually easier because the numbers are hard, you know, like there's not so much fuzziness about the numbers. Um, so it's often easier to quantify them as um, some kind of a visual analytics dashboard. Mm -hmm. 